The president of the Spokane, Washington chapter of the NAACP has resigned after she broke the internet when her parents outed her as white. I'm of course referring to the controversy over Rachel Doljal, a woman who at first glance appears as a light-skinned mixed-race person of African-American heritage. Releasing photos of Doljal in her younger days, her parents have said she is not remotely black, and certainly in those earlier photos, she has white, freckled skin and straight blonde hair, appearing like nothing other than a white woman. Doljal, in her resignation, which she posted to Facebook, took credit for raising the profile of the Spokane NAACP office. In her letter, she referred to the construct of race. Doljal is also an instructor in Africana studies at the Eastern Washington University, where she has taught African and African-American art history, African history, African-American culture, and the black women's struggle, as well as intro to African studies. On her faculty website, the university lists on her bio that there have been, quote, at least eight documented hate crimes targeting Doljal and her children. She obtained her master's in fine art from Howard University, which is a historically black school, but when she was a student there, she was herself a white woman who was simply painting black subjects in her art. Yesterday, it was revealed that Doljal actually sued Howard University, claiming she was discriminated against because she was white. Somewhere along the way, when she moved to Spokane, Washington, she decided to perm her hair and darken her skin and, quote, become black, a phenomenon that some have coined reverse passing. In a series of high-profile TV interviews yesterday, she continued to maintain that she identifies as black. Well, the case of Rachel Doljal has raised many, many questions around race and racism, particularly given the national dialogue on police violence against African Americans. My guest is Rosa Clemente, community organizer, freelance journalist, and hip-hop activist, 2008 Green Party vice presidential candidate, and a doctoral candidate in the W.E.B. Du Bois Department of Afro-American Afro Studies at UMass Amherst. She's currently a visiting scholar at the Department of Pan-African Studies at Cal State L.A. Welcome to Uprising, Rosa. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, ever since the story broke last Friday, it's just been going round and round in my head. It's been making me a little bit angry, raising my blood pressure, mm -hmm. looking at my Facebook feed, looking at what you've been saying. I, I think there's definitely um, similar issues. Um, I know that this is something that um, you've tackled with personally for a long time, the issue of identity and, and how people look at blackness in America. So let me just ask you, first of all, broadly speaking, what your overall impressions are of not just this woman who says, continues to say she identifies as black, but also about the discourse that has come about around her? Well, I mean, I think she's a liar. I think she's a thief. I think she's an ethnic gentrifier. I think she's performing in blackface. Mm -hmm. I met Rachel four months ago, maybe five, uh, late January myself when I went to speak at Eastern Washington University with the Department of Film Studies, um, Chicano Studies, and the Africana Studies Department. I had dinner with her, you know, and I told my husband when I came home, I said, oh, you know, she's one of those type of white girls. Hmm. And you, for my community... You saw, you saw her as a white girl? Yeah, well, in my community or, like, you know, from where I come from, we see white women like that all the time, right? Like, people who... You're, you're like, they're not, I don't think they're fully black, most likely biracial, or maybe just one of those white women that has culturally connected herself to blackness either by growing up in a black community, by adopting um, cultural, by adopting effect, and all of that kind of stuff. Now, that's not a question you asked, all right? You don't go, hey, by the way, what are you? Especially for us, as people of color, we don't like that question being asked to us, right? And that's not how the conversation was. It was an academic gathering, dinner, whatever. But I did say to my husband, oh, she's like one of them type of white girls. She's either like white and grew up in the hood kind of thing and has committed herself to social justice and racial justice. And there's white people in black studies all the time, right? Mm -hmm. That's not like a phenomenon. Right. Or she, I was like, oh, she's biracial. Why I told him this was because when we were having dinner, she questioned Latinos and Latinas being in the Black Lives Matter movement. And I said, well, yeah, that's what I'm here to talk about, right? How we, as Afro-Latinos, is not just about identifying as black. Many of us are African descended. We are racially black. If we are in our homelands and look phenotypically black or are African descendant, we are subjected to white supremacy and oppression and imperialism. It doesn't play out the same for us as Afro-Latinos in the U.S., 
But as someone who knows that Latino or being Puerto Rican or Hispanic is not a race, um, I've identified as black, racially black, ever since I came into the consciousness of who I was. Mm -hmm. 